Hey everybody, Josh Jr. here for another little noisy in-shop adventure. Now this one here, by the title. I am showing through my cleaning process after my material is done with polish in the Lato Tumblers. This has been going for its normal cycle, about two days, about 50 hours. And it's about typical for, the, for these. So what we're going to do is Open these up. Dumb dish soap. Just a little squeeze. And this is the messy part. Fill with water. Go to the other side. And repeat the process. Now, this sits here for approximately 15 to 30 minutes. So, we'll go through the final cleaning stuff. Now, let's talk about this. Now, it's quieted down now with the water in there. I do not burnish any of my stuff. Burnishing is the process where you run it in some sort of soap for 24 hours, some people 12 hours, after you're done with the, with the polishing cycle. People will go through there, clean it, and then they're going to rerun it back through it is burnishing process. The theory is it's supposed to help clean them. That might be okay in a rotary. But in any vibe, that is hogwash. When we get done with these, if I had a white glove, I would give you the white glove treatment and show you how clean these rocks are. Part of the cleaning process is also your inspecting. You just don't rinse them off and call it good and hope that you got all the stuff off. There's a lot of there's some steps involved here that you do. Just a clean with Dawn dish soap filled with water and a good rinsing afterwards, and that's all you really need. Okay, it's starting to get dark on us. I was hoping to get this a couple hours earlier. And I forgot to tell you what material this was. This is that's now finished with the polishing process. Saddle Mountain Petrified Wood. So we're just going to go through here and go through the cleaning process. And this stuff is hard to get out. I have some bigger pieces in here. And so basically what I'm doing is this, this, none of these are candidates for good quality polishing. They all have cracks, divots, mars, I mean marks on them, uh, voids. None of them are very good at, for being a polish. This is kind of the last of the leftover batch. And I'm playing catch up on this. So it's basically what I do is I just look through here and go through each rock. And then I'll put it on a uh, rag here behind us. And then we will take a look at the final batch. But so what I'm looking for is to make sure that there's no polish left in there. This area right here is an area that there's going to be some polish left in. Now this white is not. That's the 
host material or the, the calcium that covers this stuff. But there's a couple of deep holes in there. And that's all I did. Just a quick, quick look. And like I said, if I had white gloves, you're going to find out the stuff is clean. And I usually go fairly quick on this. When you do it enough, you know what to look for. Yeah, all this stuff was collected. Oh, geez, I know there's a video on it. I was been up to Saddle Mountain three or four different times. But it was all collected by the Mrs. Jaws Jr. and myself. And uh, it's a lot of fun doing that. See? Again, there's really no reason to do any burnishing step process with this stuff here. A little bit of polishing that little spot. Oh, I got you guys wet. There, dried you off. Feel better? I'll try to be more careful next time. But any of the small chips that's left over in here is just going to stay with the media. Because there's really no reason. And yeah, pieces like this here, that's part of the media for me. And there's one more piece. And another piece right there. So basically, that's it. My cleaning stuff, see, that's part of the, the calcium in there. And again, this is stuff here is just the junk material. I mean, I'm really, was really not expecting too much out of it. Same procedure. Now, there's that big one. Okay, we'll just continue on with what we were doing. Now this one is not Saddle Mountain. I just threw this one in the batch because it's an agatized piece. I don't know where it came from, but it is just beautiful. And I just make this go as quick as I can. Because typically, I want to get another batch going. But I do run separate barrels. So what I usually will do is I will have the pre-polished barrels already loaded and ready to go. And I'll dr dump them right on the lotto without even shutting it off. So let me get these uh, dried off and set out for you guys so you can see what the quality of polish is like.
Okay, there is the finished batch. All dried up. Lay it out here for you to, for a display for you guys. Unfortunately, that's almost too bright. There you go. You get up the idea there. Let's do this one here we already looked at. Now, not all of them are that way. Like this one here is not one. Or if it is, it's not that good. See? It does a little bit around the edges. So, I am not telling you the specific procedures I use to get this for a reason. Because what works for one person may not work for another. Who, right now, has Saddle Mountain Petrified Wood, that's agatized, assimilized. They used a Lotto Tumbler. They used the type of grit that I use. They used the type of polish that I use. And has the same quality of water with my patient's level. All of those are variables. All of those can affect results. That's why I tell people, you need to practice. Get a lot of material of one thing. Practice. Get it to come out to look right. Then move on to another material using what you learned from the first one. Very few people can sit down and off their first six batches get a polish like this. This took a long time, a lot of work, a lot of practice. To give you an idea, to show you how much practice it took, this is most of it. I've given a lot of it away. Kind of to give you an idea of what it started off as, that's what it started off as. And then you can end up with something like that. Or, that's a cut piece. There's one with the opalization in it. So, it takes a long time, very patient, you have to practice all of this to figure out what you want out of this. So I know there's going to be frustrated people because I'm not telling them exactly what I'm doing. Well, I'm going to tell you what I did, I practiced, I took good notes. I made mistakes. I learned from my mistakes. And I am now able to do quite well. Still needs room in for improvement. I still could see flaws with some of these. 
Is some of these still us or not right? This one here, maybe I should have ground down on the wheel for it better or on a flat lap. That one's got a deep groove in there. This one here should have never probably been polished, but it did. That one's got cracks from tumbling in it, so. This one here. Yeah, there's a couple cracks in it. It's in the tumbling process. That one could have been cleaned off better on the outside. See, almost every piece I see something wrong with. There's a couple cracks in that one. Now, today's batch. Let's look at this big beast. This one was big enough. I should have ground off this and smoothed that out right there. Yep. Got a little bit of dampness on it. There we go. This one here doesn't have quite the crisp shine on it I want. You see a little bit of haze on it. That's disappointing. That side turned out good. But that side, it, but it's colorful. Look at the colors on that. So there you go, everybody. Practice, practice, practice. Practice your tumbling. Take good notes. Don't be afraid to screw, screw something up because you might learn more from it. Just wanted to take you through the process that I use to clean my polished material right at the very end of my entire polishing process. And again, no burnishing. Don't need it. Don't need to cause the damage. So just remember, everyone's life is an adventure. Then there's mine. Having a good time with some petrified wood. This is the Adventures of Josh Jr. Have a good one, everybody. See ya!